Welcome back to Whistle Down Pinkies Up, the Bridgerton arm of our amazing show. Um, Pinkies Up, I called it amazing. I did do that. Uh, it's we me- are amazing. We are okay. so, we are amazing. Where myself, Carly, and Melanie, hello, talk about Bridgerton. And today's a very exciting episode because. We finally get to watch episode one. Yay! Uh, I've been excited about this for literally maybe just 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 since season one ended. I've seen it five times. It's fine. It's fine. It's not a cry for help. It's <laughs> fine. It's absolutely okay. Um, but yeah, so jumping right in, what is your hottest tea, you think, from this first episode? Hottest tea from this episode is a weird one, actually. Why is uh, Penelope speaking in an Irish accent? Just randomly when she's out and around. Like, I guess she has to, like, be in disguise when she's being Lady Whistledown. But she does, in fact, just kind of break into an Irish bro, which is actually, as a matter of fact, that actress is Irish. That is how she actually talks. You can see her on Dairy Girls, which is another great show that I so love. Um, but it was just, it was jarring suddenly. So there's there's hot tea in, in the sa- sense that uh, Penelope has such an alter ego developed for Lady Whistledown that, like, she's got this whole thing where she's pretending to be her, her her servant and like run errands for her. So, so this has actually evolved much past what I thought in season one. That's my tea, how about you? Um, well, quickly before my tea, I just wanted to say, I think that um, as far as being in disguise, I think Penelope is one of, I love her. That's one of the worst disguises I've ever seen in my oh, whole yeah. what? wide life. She sticks out like a, a, not a sore thumb, like a beautifully manicured thumb. Beautiful thumb. What a lovely a thumb. A lovely, lovely thumb She's she is. She's still wearing this like bright flower yellow. Her yeah. hair is bright red. Mm-hmm. I understand the problem. And she's speaking in an Irish accent in a place where everyone's speaking in a British accent. She's kind of saying like, oh, hello, I'm here. Hi. Hi, I'm hiding. It, it's, it, she, she's made some strange choices. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say that. So since we started on Penelope, let's start on Penelope. Oh, yes. When talking about, you know, the different paths that this show is going down, because what we're going to do is we're going to break it down by character, kind of make it easy to keep track of what's going on person to person, moment to moment. You're not going to forget uh, from one scene to the next whether or not uh, somebody else is in somebody's home or who's hanging out with Lord Feather Bottom. Huh. Um, so, uh, yes, in this episode, per my notes, uh, she, number one, is running a fake, fake Irish accent. Um, not a lot actually happens with Penelope in this episode. So we're setting this up. We have to talk about Penelope. Um, but in this first one, I do have a question, though, uh, because I thought she was running away at the end of last season. That was the distinct impression I got when she was in the carriage, kind of just breaking free of her life in which her father had just left and taken all the money, but also he's dead. Yes, like she definitely gave the impression of running away, but it seems like she just ran home. But we do know also from the beginning of this episode that Lady Whistledown has not been publishing anything for a while, but then swoops on in and publishes right when everyone's like doing the whole like coming out thing. Yeah, they're like, the the queen I think is kind of, but simultaneously hoping that she won't be back because they have this kind of rivalry thing going on, going on, and hoping that she will because she is phenomenally bored. Yeah, all the time. Um, at least the rivalry is something to do. Totally. So everyone has kind of been wondering whether uh, Lady Whistledown will come back, and she's been dormant, she's been quiet, but lo and behold, her first paper ends up on the doorstep, and also Penelope is still at home. And it's also funny because you can see it getting more and more difficult for Penelope to hide. Yes. And also, this kind of goes in line with her whole bad disguise, where she's not being that careful. Yeah, no. She's really, um, I would be putting up a hood. I would maybe be, like, covering my hair. I guess she probably doesn't have any dirty, grimy clothes, which you don't really think of as being a problem yeah. in life. Like, oh no, <laughs> um, all my clothes are nice. All oh, my clothes are too clean. But I feel like she's made her money as Whistledown now. Can't she then use some of it to get gross clothes? Like, they, they shouldn't be you made enough money to buy shittier clothes, Penelope. Yeah, come on, Penelope. Uh, that's, that's true, but then would it be sus for her to even go buy those clothes? Yes. Oh, that's true. Where would she get them? Don't they kind of make their own? Well, she can pop on her little Irish accent and be like, this is for someone else that's a 
a different person. She's hitting a lot of roadblocks. We're coming up against that theme, and I, I assume we're going to see a lot of it this season, of ladies being trapped by social convention. Speaking of one of her main roadblocks is Eloise, her dear friend, who's her. obsessed with Lady Whistledown. Indeed. And also roasts Lady Whistledown to Penelope's, Penelope's face, which is a convention that I... Uh, Almost never tire of. Oh, yeah. On multiple occasions. I kind of really do love seeing... I, I'm thinking her face is going to get more and more strained every time it happens. Because last season, she would just kind of, like, smile along. Like, oh, here's my little secret smile. I'm Lady Whistledown. You don't know. This first episode, she was just kind of... She kind of looked annoyed. She was like, well, maybe she has a reason for doing these things. Yep. Eloise is making some good points, though. She makes... Also, Elo, Eloise is, is full to the brim with great points, I think, honestly. ultimately, this relationship is going to help them both. I still kind of... Okay, I know at this point that at least Penelope is straight. Like, I, I'm aware of that, but I still kind of shift them. I can't help it. I understand that. So, yeah. Also, what's going on with the Featherington whole situation? They, we left their family in, like, a pretty unsettled state. Yeah, honestly, I thought things were going to be worse for them coming back into this season because, uh, okay... Their dad was just, you know, murdered for for fixing fixing a wrestling, which is a no-no. Um, and also, she thought, Lady Featherington thought that the money would still be there in the desk. But when she went, she found uh, no money. No money in the desk. Uh, and then it cut to Penelope running away in a carriage. And I, I got the distinct impression that she was running away with the money to be Lady Whistledown. Which is not what happened because we came back. The family's still situated in their house after a full year. Penelope's chilling. She's not happy, but she's chilling. And they are awaiting the arrival of the new lord. Because mm -hmm. as we know uh, in the social mords of the Regency, there can never be a non-lord of a house. Uh, there has to be a man in charge at all times. And when one man died, the next man, the next man will take his place. Which, um, you know, also explains Anthony, which I'm sure we will get into this season. Yes. Uh, waiting for that flashback episode like they had for Simon. Oh my god, yeah. You're right. We, yeah. we need that backstory. It's probably going to be brutal. That actually leads into my... Oh wait, I do have one question about Penelope, um, which I think is just general. And I just want to see what happens. I want to know what her plan is for the money she's saving. Because no, no one, like, squanders it. Like, why is she doing this? I think she might just be preparing to be a single lady for the rest of her life. Um, like, as a backup plan. Um, excuse me, just doing these single ladies. Um, like as a backup plan, because I know, like, I know she likes Colin, but I think it's become evident. She, I don't know how many years she's been out. I guess yeah. it's two now that like, she's not a major prospect for anyone. Her family kind of like the Bennett's and Pride and Prejudice has like a bad reputation of not being well liked. Actually, I'm, and I'm pretty sure she's out right now. She's out. She's yeah. been out since last season. Okay. Yeah. Cool, uh, cool, cool. And she really did not want to go to the balls, much like Eloise. Now she's kind of putting more more of her back into it. Crazy. Um, but yeah, I have a feeling she's saving up for the prospect of being an old name. That, oh, that makes sense. Not that single, single ladies, but when she's like, she clearly is still into Colin, even from afar. Yes, yes. And um, so it's sad in that regard. But you mentioned Anthony, our uh, romantic lead for the season, the if you will. The star of the show. The star of the show, uh, which leads into uh, what I think is the hottest tea is the way, like the sheer way in which he is right now mega Anthony and like yeah. his shut down emotionally, like I will not participate emotionally quest for perfection. Yeah, like, hello, Anthony, have you met your emotions? Have you ever uh, gotten in touch with them? Gotten to know them? I think Anthony needs to see inside out. Yes. Yep. He needs to. I think that would help him. Just familiarize himself. Also, his mom walking in and loudly announcing to the room, like, Anthony is seeking someone. And then him going, and I wrote this down because I felt it was important. I've already compiled an index of the season's eligible misses. Jesus, dude, an index? You use the word index. It's it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's super weird. But you can also see just, like, inside his human brain as opposed to... His, his monkey brain. His monkey brain. His lizard brain. His lizard brain. Um, you can see... Him trying to do what he did for Daphne, which was not good. Like, yeah, to like, himself. Didn't he see that that didn't work? Like, why is he trying to take the same tack? Because he's better and will be perfect. He's putting, he's trying to be like to everyone to himself and ask for no help none of the time. And he doesn't want to like emotionally open up to let even. He won't even let his mother mother him. And no. she's so good at it. Like, she's let great. your mother do her job. She's, what a, honestly, Lady Bridgerton Lady slaps. Bridgerton is, as a mom, just, she, she goes on that top tier moms list. Yes, she does. She does. Way better, better than the uh, Featheringtons. Way, yeah. Mm -hmm. She, she makes some choices. 
She does. It's like he's trying to interview his wife for a job, which yes. is not something that you do. And like you see him in this episode, like speaking to ladies, going to balls loudly, just having his intention announced. So like, of course there was no avoiding that. Um, and it really is like watching a montage of a series of job interviews. Which, um, yeah, which also, if you peep back to our history episode, I don't even know if we covered it in there, but during this time period, like the Regency era, the concept of finding marriage, like a loving marriage in which you have combat compatibility and you actually get along with your partner is a very real thing. Like the uh, the notion that marriage is exclusively business and feelings are not involved in it is actually kind of dated. Anthony's idea of being stuck to that idea is actually an old timey idea yeah, for like, the Regency era. He's being weird and old fashioned about this. Yes. Like he's, he's strange, uptight and old fashioned and it's... Oh, so fun to watch. Yeah, it is because be, it's fun to watch because you know and we see the moment it breaks, it breaks so hard because he sees, and I, I think we're going to have to track this in every episode, he sees uh, Lady Kate Sharma running, not Lady Kate Sharma, she's not a lady, I don't think. No, she's not, yeah. Uh, he sees regular old Kate Sharma running away on a horse, uh, sees her once and can't catch her and goes, that's my wife! <laughs> So uh, every episode, I believe Anthony is going to have a that's my wife uh, moment that uh, he denies. Yeah. Forcefully. I really think, oh, also, I really think we need to set up a structure, a fun idea, where in through this podcast, we will give you rules to a Bridgerton drinking game you can play at your leisure. Yes, for this season. And uh, number one, number one uh, drinking moment is going to be any time you see in Anthony's eyes that little moment where he realizes, like, ah, uh, Kate. Because he and Kate really are quite, quite similar. More notes. Let's talk about, first, who Kate is. Her mother's name is Lady Mary. She has a younger sister named Edwina. They are staying with Lady Danbury for the season. They have a corgi named Newton, who is adorable and who hates Anthony. She is 26 years old. I am 26 years old. She is unmarried. I am unmarried. She's an old maid. I have feelings about this. Um, she seems very confident in being an old maid. She doesn't seem to be looking for love or romance. She is fully focused on finding love for her younger sister. And how do you feel about it? Uh, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you ask my boyfriend? Uh, um, she talks so much also. Yeah. I'm just gonna... She talks so much, which is so... You can even see Lady Danbury being put off by it, which is a lot, because Lady Danbury is A, super cool, and B, permissive a lot of a lot of things from ladies because she is so super cool. But even she is taken aback by the almost, it's not quite arrogance, but it's on the border of it, this confidence that Kate has that she knows exactly what to do. It's actually very, this, this episode alone, and I'm sure it's going to continue on through this season, I mean, honestly. she's meant to be a match for Anthony. Honestly, true. But, um... This episode alone rings so strongly of Taming of the Shrew uh, with, like, Ka literal Catherine. The name is the same. Of where you have, like, the shrewish older sister that hasn't gotten married, refuses to get married, and is every man is put off by her because she's so loud and outspoken and is like, I don't want to get married. But the younger sister, she's, like, is sweet and kind but kind of, like, Dull. But and not, adorable. She's so cute. Oh, she's the best. She's just so sweet. And she will make someone who's not Anthony very happy. Just somebody who is very much. Somebody, honestly, a lot more like. Yeah, what's what's the, the Featherington sister's name? Pippa? Peppa? Yes. Pippa. The guy she's with, I think. Oh, Mr. Finch. Aww, adorable. They're so cute. That's the kind of guy Edwina needs. Like, slightly less dorky. Yeah. But that kind of sweetness, that kind of warmth, because she's a very sweet and warm person. Anthony is too hard for anybody but someone like Kate. He needs somebody who's going to call him out on his bullshit. Exactly, because Anthony is convinced he's right all the time, and somebody who's too nice to him will let him be right all the time. And, and he's so frequently wrong. He's, he's wrong so often. He needs someone who's like, you're wrong. And he'll be like, meh. And, mm. then, <laughs> and then it'll work out from there. Um... But yeah, I really think that that is, yeah, I think that the trajectory of Taming of the Shrew is really going to be big time here. I don't think Anthony will full of, pull a full Petruchio. Um, Here's a fun fact. One of the Shakespeare plays I've never read. It, really? I was formerly a theater major. I've read many Shakespeare plays. I took two different Shakespeare classes. I have not read same, Taming of the Shrew. I saw 
a Chinese opera production that was an adaptation of Taming of the Shrew when I was a freshman in college, but it was in Chinese. Uh, so I didn't know what was happening. Well, a one-line summary of what happens is Kate, Catherine, the mean older sister, has a younger sister who's really sweet and kind, but the father's like, the younger sister isn't allowed to get married until the older sister gets married. And so Regency rules, even though it wasn't the Regency. <laughs> it's true. So the men in town paid off Petruchio to marry Kate and like, ladies put your feminism away for a second and like train her into being a good wife and kind of like beat her and starved her but it's like a comedy (laughs) Um, and then like bianca gets married and kate eventually is like oh my god wow look i'm such a great wife um that's the play okay i'm glad i've never read this play yeah (laughs) um but that's what it is and this has a lot of likenesses i don't think anthony's gonna do that and kate is shonda rhimes would not not do that she would not dare honestly others would call kate a shrew Kate is just opinionated, yes. and also a lot of the time she's right. Like, Kate, you want to be Kate's friend in the modern day. Back then oh. it was, like, the disgrace, TBH. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've been talking about Kate quite a bit. Um, she is, I will say, the one, the one more thing that we do have to note is her last name is Sharma. In the book, it's Sheffield. I haven't read the book. Really? My mom has. But in the book, her last name is Sheffield, which I have a feeling is, is detail we're going to get because we know her mother left London in somewhat of a disgrace. Uh, there, there, there was scandal. I have a feeling her sister might be her half sister. I'm not sure. It's a whole thing. Um, but we should talk also about Eloise. Oh, Eloise! Because uh, poor Eloise has had to come out this season, and she which did has not want to. Been giving her a lot of feelings. Yeah. Um, Eloise canceled plans are like crack Bridgerton. Uh, who would just, just loves the fact that she does not have to go do things. She goes to, of course, this first episode as the last season did, starts with this beautiful coming out party. Even Daphne shows up. It's, it's lovely. Um, we all wish Simon were there to make sarcastic commentary. He is not. Oh, Unfortunate. Also just to look at him. Awesome. But Eloise gets to come out. Lucky for her, the ceremony is interrupted and she does not have to speak to the queen, which would 100% have ruined her chances. She looks like she's about to faint. Yes, and it's interrupted by Lady Whistledown, which TBH, that's a friend move. Yes, Penelope saved her. Big time. Oh, and then also within this episode, we have to talk about um, Edwina being named the Diamond. Yeah. Oh, that was a big thing. Huge. Because that means that Anthony now has his sights set on Edwina because he just wants perfection. So he's like, oh, well, I have to try to get with the diamond. But now he's made an enemy of her sister, Kate. And they're obviously like meant to be together. Because so she like... overheard him growing around with his bros. Because isn't that always the way he's like, oh, I'm going to win the best one. And I'm going to match him up best for my prospects. I don't care about love. And Kate's like, this guy is an ass. Uh, she's and she's right. She's right. I love Anthony so much. She's right. Yeah, he's absolutely. Major, correct. major. He's got, he's got a lot of growing to do. Exactly. And now he keeps trying to be like, I didn't, I didn't mean those things you overheard me say in complete honesty and confidence. But she uh, has formed a first impression of him, and she is not letting go, which is going to make this even more interesting. It's very. Pride and Prejudice. Very Pride and Prejudice makes me quite happy. It's it's because it literally GTA. is something overheard at a dance. A man talking to his friends about like, oh, she's not him handsome enough to tempt me. Yeah, and then she's like, okay, well, like now this is what I think of you forever. Yeah, and Anthony's like, no, it's not me. Because also Anthony's like, I'm heartless and I don't care. Which like, he doesn't even realize it's a lie. But like, obviously it's a lie. He's just damaged. He has so I feel like he has so much heart underneath of that cold steel thing he's using. Do they have steel? Well, you Actually, said they had the, they the had train, steel. right? Am I dumb? No, no, you're dumb. probably right. They had steel. I bet they had steel. Cut that back. was the 20s. Yes, you're right. That they made steel, and I remember that because of Thoroughly Modern Millie. We've gone on a tangent. They did not have steel. So whatever iron thing he had over his heart, I think underneath of it is going to be a, a squishy Anthony. I think so. I'm so looking forward to Anthony. Squishy Anthony. So as we're in the final few moments of our podcastery today, mm. um, what would you say is a predicted Lady Whistledown headline? What do you think we're going to see coming forward? I can't give you a specific headline, but I think I will give you that I think Eloise is going to have more influence over what Lady Whistledown has to say. I think Eloise mm. raises some excellent points about what she could be doing with her pen and she 
I mean, how do you not listen to her to your friend like that? Penelope is going to take that in consciously or unconsciously in some way. And we've already seen her use it to help her friend by accident. I think we're going to see her using the headlines to help her friend on purpose. Nice. Whether that's to draw attention towards her or away from her, we'll have to see. I think for my uh, Lady Whistledown headline prediction, I think we're going to end up, like, I think Kate is going to get involved in something that's like, where she ends up in a headline for some reason. Oh, that would be interesting because she is not on the market. Yeah, like I can't think of what it is, but I think there's gonna be something that kind of forces her who's trying so hard not to be in the center of attention, like into the center of attention. There's a lot of conversations about the difference between being invisible and being at the center of everything. And it seems in this society, this area, you can either be one or the other, you can't be both. And you're right, as soon as Kate becomes the person who Anthony is interested in, even if anyone gets an inkling of it, she will suddenly go from being completely invisible to being one of the most visible people in town. It's true. Wild prediction. Yes. I hope that happens. Me too. Okay. Uh, so that's it for this episode of uh, Pinkies Up. Or whistle. This, that's it for this episode of uh, Whistle Down Pinkies Up. I have been Melanie Weir. And I'm Carly Paulstina. Pinkies Up. Pinkies Up.